Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So let's talk about room symmetry or asymmetry in a home studio, right? Is this something that you should fix before you do anything else? I got this question from one of my email subscribers, and it's really relevant to something that I haven't talked about in a while. So let me just read this out for you. Hey Jesko, I have a quick question. I have a room that I want to turn into a mixing mastering studio. It is 25 square meters with high ceilings, but has two problems. The door is straddling one corner, and on the other side, there's a 25 centimeter thick and 180 centimeter long brick wall added on the left wall. So I don't know which side to choose to work on treatment. I thought of adding another brick wall, if that is necessary for symmetry, but if it would be not worth the hustle and money, I could also bomb the place with absorbers. Would it still leave me with a distorted stereo image? I can't imagine that facing the door side would be better, but would love to hear your thoughts. Cheers, Kevin. So yeah, let me answer this question, not quite directly, but Kevin, you should still get your answer because I wanna put this into the broader picture for you to understand what is going on. So the short answer is sure. In an ideal world, if you're just prioritizing acoustics, you want to fix any asymmetries in the room before you do anything else like listener and speaker placement treatment and so on. Yeah, But that kind of goes in the same line with making sure that you have a big enough space and that the room is fully decoupled, etc. But I'm not trying to be cynical here. Rather, the point I'm trying to make is that it is a matter of priorities. So I wrote an article on my blog a while back called Smart Acoustic Treatment, How to Get the Most Out of Your New Room and Speakers. You should totally check it out. I'll link it in the description below. And it's all based around this idea of the acoustic treatment priority hierarchy that I came up with. Basically, well, it's aimed at home studio, so it should really be the home studio acoustic treatment priority hierarchy. And the particular aspect that I want to focus on is kind of the basement to this pyramid, right? So that's marked as room preparation here and it's grayed out and marked with this dashed line because in most cases, we don't really have the option to change the room. We kind of have to work with what we're given. So the way to think about this is that it's kind of like the source material in a mix, right? You're given the source material and that's what you have to work with. And more than anything, it kind of determines the upper limit of how far you can take that mix, or in this case, how far you can take the improvements of this room. And just like going back and re-recording individual tracks for the mix, it can be worth going in and fixing certain aspects of the room, like asymmetries, for example. And in particularly bad circumstances, particularly bad cases, it can make all the difference. But in most cases, it won't make or break the end result. So going back and making those changes really is a matter of priorities. So where does that leave us kind of in practice when it comes to our particular case, our home studio? Well, the thing to understand is that as long as you have local symmetry around your listening position and speakers, you will largely get a symmetrical response, at least in the mids and highs. That's because the response in the mids and highs is pretty much completely dominated by reflections. And in particular, the closer those reflections are to your listening position and speaker, the larger their impact is. So as long as you have local symmetry around your listening position and speakers, the large extent of the reflection pattern is going to be symmetrical, and so will the response be. Of course, when we're talking about low frequencies, that part of the spectrum is completely dominated by standing waves. And so if there is an asymmetry concerning large surfaces in your room, you will get a slightly different response from your left than from your right speaker. And so that asymmetry will show up in how the pattern of standing waves forms, depending on whether the left speaker or the right speaker plays energy into the room. So any asymmetry in that case is kind of limited to the low frequencies. That said, if you're wondering where to set up in an asymmetrical room, one thing still takes priority over all others. And this applies to all rooms, not just asymmetrical rooms. It's the same in what are deemed or look like symmetrical rooms as well. 
and that is finding the spot with a balanced low end to place your listening position. It's the spot that I call the low end sweet spot because while you can fix or at least improve asymmetry in the mids and highs with treatment, it's close to impossible to fix or improve a generally unbalanced low end with treatment alone. And that's because the balance in the low end is to the largest extent determined by the standing wave pattern in your room and whether that pattern is balanced, whether those standing waves are balanced against each other at the spot where you place your listening position. And this is irrespective of whether there is a slight asymmetry between the left and right speakers in the low end, like I mentioned in the point before. So you always, always, always want to pick a spot in the room to place your listening position where the low end is balanced even if that means that you don't get local symmetry around your setup in order to get symmetry in the mids and highs. But in most rooms, that won't be the case. So don't get too hung up on it. It's very possible that you will find a low end sweet spot that works in your room that also has local symmetry. But in any case, in a home studio, picking a listening position for low end balanced takes priority over everything else. So the question obviously becomes, how do you find the room's low end sweet spot? Well, that's why I developed the base hunter technique, right? Because you can obviously go through rounds and rounds of measurements. You can set up by trial and error and see if you can by chance stumble across the right spot. But it makes way more sense to just use a structured listening test, right? So this is again, the base hunter technique that I developed specifically for this purpose. The point is to isolate the standing wave pattern in your room and then systematically test potential options for the listening position. And so that's what this guide walks you through step by step in order to figure out where that low end sweet spot actually is. It shouldn't take you more than an hour or two. It's really easy to do. You just need a single speaker and some music that you know really well. It doesn't matter whether you do this in the untreated room or in a treated room. So if you haven't done this yet, ever, then you need to do this right now because it is the single most important thing that you can get right in your home studio. So again, you can download my Bass Hunter technique completely for free at the link in the description. All right, so I hope that gives you some perspective and a method to deal with any potential asymmetries in your room. With that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.